Hello. I feel like we need to change. Pink. No. Orange. Blue. Green. Um. You know what? Let's just go back to white. Yeah, the weird intros continue. What you gonna do about it? Last week, I did a squishy unboxing of unwanted, used, or damaged squishies donated by my generous subscribers, and you guys voted on which ones I should make over today. And if you weren't a part of that, shame on you. I'm just kidding. I still love you. So, the first one you guys chose was this cat ice cream. <gasps> yes! Giant ice cream cone with cats on it. I and next, of course, you guys chose the Crater Macaron. Whoa, buddy. Whoa, buddy. Whoa. Yikes. <coughs> and finally, you guys chose a poop. I've been waiting so long for this. I want to do a poop. The constipation ends today. <coughs> And the last selection is one of my own evil choosing. Move aside. I'm going to use all of these mini bread squishies together and you'll see how that goes later on. So we've got our victims. Let's now do some squishy. <coughs> ah. Squishy roasting. So let's start off with this small, very problematic macaron. Last time I did a macaron squishy, y'all yelled at me for my pronunciation with the stack of macarons. These macarons were the macarons and on macarons, but I double checked this one on the Google and that's actually how it's pronounced. A macaroon is this, macaron, macaroon. So I was actually right about something, wow. Anyway, this macaron has got a huge crater. You could actually get lost in there if you're not careful. It also has some very flaky acrylic paint all over it, which isn't cute, but we're gonna see what we can do. So I started trying to fix this by using some scrap pieces of memory foam, stuffing them in there, and I'm really just fiddling around with this, cutting, shaping, stuffing, and just, just, just trying. There was a mini crater on the other side that had to be fixed as well. Also, I peeled off some of that acrylic infection just for good measure, and this is about as good as it's gonna get. Now I'm using using some random glow paint that I rarely use for anything else, and I'm sealing all of that in. Also, I'm trying to build up like a thick line of paint to mimic the cream filling. Once that's dry, I'm gonna build a small friend out of memory foam. This macaron was just a little plain and boring, so I thought, well, maybe a strawberry on top would help. I know, my thought process is just truly revolutionary. <laughs> I'm gonna marry these two with some fabric glue. Rubber band them together to dry, and 30 minutes later, I realize I've just wasted 30 minutes because it's completely crooked and in the wrong spot, so I have to rip it off. 50% of marriages end in divorce. <laughs> That's actually not funny though. But anyway, happy ending for this couple because they end up getting back together. And this time it's for good because I'm sealing it on with some fabric paint and that ain't going anywhere now. Now I'm gonna start with the paint job. I'm using some light pink slick fabric paint. There is a lot to hide. We got bumps, we got clumps, we got acrylic infections. So we gotta smother this fellow in two thick coats of paint. If you wanna see all the materials that I use in this video, they will be linked in the description so you can check them out there. Now comes the white filling, which did turn out a little thicker than I intended, but I'll let that one go because I gotta choose my battles, you know? I'm gonna paint the strawberry red, shocker, and I'm adding like a spread of red around it to look like a strawberry sauce, and at this point I decided I absolutely hate this red, I can't deal with it. I just don't like how orangey it is, so this is a battle I'm actually going to fight. So I went over that after mixing some pink into the red. Now it looks like a clown nose. I'm gonna go ahead and add a strawberry leaf to make it more obvious that it's a strawberry and add some white seeds as well. And this happened. I'm stupid. Ugh. If I edited out all of my mistakes, these videos would probably be like two minutes long. <laughs> Here it is, and hey, you like my new toy? It spins so you can see like all around the squishy without my hand in the way. I like it. I think that this is a big improvement. We can no longer call this the Crater Macaron. It's very, very squishy, which is great. And I just, I think it came out really cute. I'm quite satisfied with it. And guys, I did it again. We had a similar situation going on last episode. This is starting to get like squishy makeover inception. It really was not intentional, but hey, 
okay. I love series. I love things in multiples, so this kind of makes me happy. Okay, and now it's time for the pile of bread slices. There's a lot of different things going on here, so let's break it down, shall we? So we've got two panda bread slices, one that's perfectly fine, and the other that's been through some stuff. We've got this derpy looking fellow, derp, derp, derp. This one, which is actually um adorable. You're beautiful, it's true. I've got to break that habit. And finally, we have this, well, uh, I don't know. Okay, like this is just, such a pointless design. What does this even mean? <laughs> anyway, these bread slices will unite to make a sandwich. Who saw that coming? So here's the plan. I'm gonna keep the pandas as the bread and the rest of these fools are gonna be the sandwich guts. They are a little too thick though, so I'm gonna start by slicing through derpy and I'm just carefully working my way through, trying to cut as evenly as possible and aha, success. So now I'm just gonna trim the shape into more of a circle because this is gonna be be the ham and the other part of derpy is going to be the cheese so I'm gonna cut that into more of a rectangle shape brilliant now I'm gonna use this nonsense to create some lettuce and I'm going to again cut a strip all the way around but this time I'm not gonna go all the way through oh no no I'm just gonna use that cut to separate the top and bottom so that I can rip off different pieces and create a lettuce like texture and now let's see it all come together we can work with that and you may have noticed that cutie pies life was spared. That's just the way it worked out. You're beautiful. Okay, not again. <laughs> so now here's the dilemma. Do I paint all the pieces separately and then glue them together or do I glue them first and then paint them? Ultimately, I decided to glue them together first because... I like how when you paint over everything as a unit, it seals everything really well and you don't have to worry about it coming apart or anything like that. It feels like one united piece. And I know like sandwiches are not one piece. They're like different pieces. Yeah, I get that, but it's a squishy. So it's not a real sandwich. We are in business now. I'm gonna bring out my blue paint again and throw on a layer, especially over top of the lettuce cause it's got a lot of holes in it. And I'm just gonna clean that up and fill in all the gaps as best as I can. Once that dries, I'm gonna use a green puffy paint over the lettuce. That's some wet looking lettuce. I didn't really like the way that looked. So I'm gonna go over it with a matte green paint to give it a cleaner look. And I'm starting on that top piece of bread. And wow, look at that. I'm just gonna jump into everything now. The ham, the cheese, just tossing paint everywhere. This looks a hot mess. Um, I'm working on it, okay? So this was really just about going back and forth and touching up and fixing up and going over things like a million times. It did add a layer of mayo as well because there were some gaps that I wanted to fill in. So not everyone who watches these videos actually decorates squishies themselves, but for those of you who are interested in trying this out, don't do it. It'll take over your life. I was just talking to a fellow squishy decorator and she told me that this matte paint can wear out with squishing. I hadn't seen this happen to any of my squishies before, but then again, I don't squish them a ton. So I painted a test squishy and I squished it over and over and over for two days straight. The paint doesn't flake or come off, but I did start to see some cracks. Honestly, I still think this paint holds up pretty well to squishing considering a store-bought squishy would probably be in worse condition at this point, but still. I ordered a bunch of different products to try out as top coats to see if we could get this even more durable. And this is the one that seemed to hold up the best in my experiment so far with no cracking even after a lot of squishing. So this is the one I'm gonna be using today, but I'm not completely committed yet because I am still testing out a few more and doing some experimenting. Anyway, here's my sandwich and I'm super happy with it. I love the amount of detail. I think it came out really good. I know some people are gonna say, oh, it needs a face. And I almost added a face to it just to make people happy, but I just couldn't bring myself to do it. I really like the way it is. Don't get me wrong, I like faces on squishies and everything. I think they're cute, but I just don't feel like every squishy needs a face. But for those of you who need to see a face on things, here you go. Are you happy? Is that good enough? But yeah, anyway, I love this little sandwich the way it is. It was kind of tricky to make, but totally worth it. Okay, and now it's time for my cat cone. Cats plus ice cream equals perfect. The squishy does have its problems. There's a large chunk missing from the cone, which I actually didn't see until I was filming this. I think I was blinded by love. Also, a huge rip and lots 
lots of cracking. I do appreciate how the one on top looks happy and the one on the bottom is like not having it. First, I need to repair the rip and my fabric glue is looking a little rough. It kind of exploded, so I get to deal with that mess now. I'm gonna glue that rip up and band it closed and look at them, still smiling, still annoyed. And after letting it dry and removing the rubber bands, the rip is looking much better. Now I'm gonna turn my attention to the chunk. I'm using some memory foam and fitting a little piece in there and gluing it in place. Then I'm gonna trim off the excess and coat it in lots of paint to try to cover it up, which was kind of working. And while I'm at it, I'm gonna seal the other cracks as well because you never wanna have your crack showing. That's not classy. Once all that dries, I'm gonna pick from my large array of mixed tan paint and I'm gonna paint over the cone with basically the same exact color as before. Yeah, I'm not too adventurous when it comes to the cone. I basically just stick to the classic. Maybe I should try something different next time, I don't know. Now I'm gonna paint the bottom cat with some light blue and you can see by my light pink paint that's open for no reason because I didn't use it until much later, I'm gonna do a cotton candy theme. And you have no idea how long I agonized over this idea. I mean, this squishy was my sweetheart, my precious, and I wanted to do something good, but I was scared to do anything too crazy. So I went with a cotton candy theme, which is kind of a classic for me. I did kind of like the solid colors on the cats, but they also looked a little plain. So I used a toothbrush to remove plaque. I dipped it in paint and then took most of the paint off so that it was almost dry, just a tiny bit of paint left. And then I used it to create some little speckles to look like cotton candy bits and just give it a little texture, make it a little bit more interesting. Most of the time, cotton candy ice cream has something like that going on, so I thought it'd be a nice addition. And now I'm gonna focus on some of the details of the faces and whatnot. I really like the one happy, one annoyed idea, so I'm gonna steal that, but I'm going to exaggerate it so that it's more obvious. So the pink cat is even more happy and the blue cat is even more annoyed. We gotta be extra with this kind of thing. Okay, let's get all these intruders out of here. So we still have this magenta ice cream kind of poking out, so I used a thick layer. How many times have I said the word thick in this video? I feel like I've said it a lot. Thick coats of paint. Too thick though. A little thicker than I intended. Anyway, a thick layer of white paint because I'm going to add some 3D cotton candy bits on here and I made these out of polymer clay specifically for this squishy. I went above and beyond for my precious. That's getting borderline creepy now. The big question is, are these technically sprinkles? Mm, I don't know. They did somewhat satisfy my sprinkle obsession, but they're different. And I am sealing this one as well because I did use that matte paint and I'm also using that to secure the cotton candy chunks on there. There's a lot going on on this squishy, but I hope it's not too much. I think it looks super cute and I'm really happy with it. There is a little scar where the missing chunk was, but I think it's a pretty decent patch job. There was a lot of effort and detail put into this one. It took forever, but I'm super happy with it. It's just lovely. Ooh, and that butt. <laughs> And yay, it's finally time for poop. I just love a good poop in my life. So this squishy has seen better days. The paint is completely flaking off. It has a large tear in the middle. That's significant. The design is fine, peeling, but fine. I mean, I don't know. The purple mustache, the weird eyes, not my favorite, but fine. As always, the first step is to seal up the rip with the help of some fabric glue, some rubber bands, and 30 minutes. That looks pretty good. I'm peeling off the face because, well, that was basically just for fun because let's be honest, it wouldn't have shown through the paint anyway, so I'm just playing around right now. Now it's sculpting time because I'm gonna make this into a unicorn poop. So of course it needs a unihorn. So I'm cutting a rough cone shape out of some scrap memory foam and including a little divot in the bottom so that it fits nicely over the top of the poop. And then I'm using a Sharpie to very messily mark out where I want the grooves to be. I mean, was this even helpful? Because I really could not make sense of that if I tried. Somehow I figured out where I was supposed to cut the little grooves and create that unicorn horn shape. And yeah, I'll accept that. So let's glue this on nice and secure with those rubber bands and there we go. Bringing out that lovely blue paint again to seal this all up, good Good, good. And now for the poop itself, I'm using some iridescent fabric paint mixed with a white metallic fabric paint to create 
a pastel-ish rainbow of pearlescence. And I just thought this paint would be perfect for the unicorn theme because it's shiny, it's magical. Of course, we need two coats of this. It took forever. I'm not too worried about blending right now. I'm kind of just doing some messy stripes. And here's where the blending comes in. I'm going in with a paintbrush and a very small amount of paint with each color and overlapping them and going back and forth. And once I'm happy with that, I get to do the whole process over again on the bottom. Yay. And this got a little chaotic. I just kind of extended the colors from the sides onto the bottom and wound up with a steaming hot mess. <coughs> but I just let it dry like that and then use the second coat to kind of clean it up a bit. Of course, blending with a paintbrush once again, just because it's the bottom doesn't mean we get to slack off. Every side is just as important, okay? So let's turn the attention to the horn. For this, I went with a gold metallic paint, which I haven't used in a long while, and this paint does not look metallic at all when it's wet, but as soon as it dries, bam, metallic magic. Now I'm gonna add the unicorn eyes and eyelashes to the front. Whenever I film the detail work, I always end up in like a weird part of the frame. It's really difficult to focus on filming and not screwing up terribly. The final touch, I'm adding some white metallic stars just because, you know, unicorn, magical stuff. And here's the final squishy. I mean, it's pearlescent. It's rainbow. It's unicorn themed. Of course I love it. This one came out more simple looking than I pictured it actually, but it's nice. It has such a good squish to it. I'm also pretty proud of the way the horn turned out. I think it looks pretty decent for being hand cut, if I do say so myself. But yes, I'm very happy I finally got to do a poop, and I must say, this is one of the best looking turds I've ever seen. I hope you guys enjoyed the squishy makeover. And quick heads up, next week is going to be a little bit different than usual. I'm gonna be posting an announcement video on Monday, and then the squishy package unboxing video will then scooch over to Friday, because it's a huge one that's gonna take me in a eternity to edit. Okay, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next week. Bye.